we're gonna see the magic. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a pretty advanced striping technique. How did you learn to do this? Just Lately, everything's trembling. All my shelters are opening. Feels like. Well, I just yeah, wanted I these guys to start to get the basics of how to do this striping because if you're not being shown, yeah. you don't know it. Yeah. Right? Cold. Your heart says it's too cold to read. Face expressions that mean nothing. Dear your sadness in this world. This is fun. Taking everyone's grabbing. All right, what are you going to do next? Uh, probably just go roll that top section up there. You got a pattern over there that's different? Oh, yeah, I got patterns in every section that I own. <laughs> yeah, I got them everywhere. I mean, I think it's faster to mow it like that. Okay. You, you're going to mow it in circles or you're going to mow it this way. You know, I find all, most of my patterns are the least amount of passes I can make in the most distance. So we've done zigzag, we've done crosshatch. What's the one you're going to do over there? Uh, probably get some diamonds over there. Maybe some diamond shaped centers there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Our first pattern is going to be zigzag, then we're going to head over and do the crosshatch, and then we're going to end the video with the diamond pattern. Okay, so what, what's going on now, Alex? So usually it's a three-week process. Usually I'll mow it this way, then that way to kind of get the diagonal lines going, uh -huh. and then the third week I'll come in and start zigzagging it. So I'll just do the three process today by cutting it three times. Cut it, and will that actually make that zigzag line in there? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you can do it in one day, but you yeah, got to triple mow it. Yeah, you're cutting it three times. Yeah. If you do it in, you know, every other week, just skipping every other week, then you'll be able to get the diagonals in there without spending too much time on it. Okay. So we'll just concentrate on this one area so we can show these guys exactly how to do it. All right. Yep. Cool. All right. All right. Thanks, Alex. Yep. He's, he's the stripe master. The first step in this three week process is to actually mow the perimeter and follow the contours. Then in week one, we mow the diagonals in a certain set of directions. Week two, we come in and we mow the diagonals in the opposite set of directions. And then week three is where we pick up the zigzags. We're going to speed this three week process up for you right here in this time lapse but then we're gonna actually break it down for you so you can see exactly how we do this. But I want you to start to wrap your head around this concept before we go in detail with it. So as he said, this is a three-step process. What, he, what you're not seeing is he's already outlined the property with his mower. So if you look over on the edge next to the patio, you can see where he follows the contour of the property but he only uses that area now to do his turnarounds so that he can start to create his straight lines. So he mows diagonally across the property, goes to the outline where he out, goes to the area where he outlined it, spins around and then hits his diagonal coming back. That's week number one. On week number two, he's going to do the same diagonal but on the opposite direction. He'll outline his property again, but then do the actual diagonals and turnarounds inside of his outline. You can see it right there. That way he's not messing up his straight line. I don't even know if I should walk on it. So once he gets his initial set of stripes laid down, he has to change his pattern. And we're going to see how he does that right next. All right, now you can see where he's cutting across his diagonals. 
Now this is technically week number two. He's already laid down his first set of diagonals in the first week and in the second week, this is where he's going the opposite path with these diagonals. Week number three is where it gets pretty interesting. Ah, this thing lays down nice stripes. God, the machine is just amazing to work with. Like in real life, that machine is just the bomb. So now he's in his own track right there. He's not cutting. And he's picking up his pattern once more. Now this next part doesn't have anything to do with stripes, but watch him make this three-point turn and look at how these dual wheels don't rip up the grass. It's, they're amazing. Now this is a prototype mower. Most of you guys probably know that, but some of you may not. This is a one-off. It's not, it hopefully it will get made, because if it does get made, I'm gonna buy one. This is an experimental unit. Never before has a mower had dual wheels like this, but those dual wheels have become my favorite. They are amazing, absolutely amazing for hill stability, for grass tearing. It just doesn't tear up grass and typically a dual rear wheeled machine would tear up grass on those turns, but this just slides across. Anyway, enough of me. See, now you can start to see the zigzag pattern in there. You follow this one straight down here, then you go over to then you can see there's another white pass there, over two, to the right, and then back up. So now do you have to do that last step? Yeah, so the first week would have been this way, the second week would have been this way, and then the third week. And now, and now we're gonna see the magic. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a pretty advanced striping technique. How did you learn to do this? Just, uh, just doing it? Playing with it, you know. It's, <laughs> I've seen it, I've mowed a lot of yards like this, and I was like, you know what, I just see a pattern in there, and I was like, I just gotta take it. There's other people that do it too online that I've seen pictures of it. Yeah. You know, but they don't usually make videos of it, so I've never really got to see how it was done. Just kind of play that's, that's why we're making a video, because I, Jake's mowed for three years, he couldn't figure out how to do this. Yeah. I could never figure out how to do this. So after we're done with this, do you have another pattern you'd like to show us in a different area? Yeah, I mean something maybe that isn't as complicated because this is pretty or I mean if you've got whatever pattern you want I just yeah, want I these guys to start to get ones. the basics of how to do this striping because if you're not being shown yeah. You don't know it. Yeah, right. Exactly. All right, so now, now we get to see the rest of it Look at that. That's just coming to life right there that is so cool. So this is how he pulls this off.
is so cool looking. Huh? Dude, that is just so cool looking. Hey, you know, a lot of people when they do it, they would just go out there and they would just make the zigzag pattern, you know, but I like it when you can fall, you can see the zigzag, but then you can follow that line with that line. And then you can also follow all these lines straight along there, you know. There's just different ways you can do it, but that's the way that I like to do it. So that's how you're able to get a tighter, uh, right, right makes a good, uh, good ladder too. Yeah, these definitely aren't my best ones, but at least they still look good. Well, you just did a three week process in one day. Yeah. So I think we get the idea because when you sp actually take the three week process and speed it up, it's not going to. I can spend a little more time on the lines too when I'm doing them once a week, you know, when I'm only doing one. Uh huh. All right. What's another pattern that you've seen? I like the patterns where they're rounded, kind of have like a roll to it, you know, like a wave. Um, I just haven't found a good property to do it at yet. Usually you roll off of like the curb line or something like that. Or up by the pond there, I have those uh, lines that go around the pond like this. And then the angles that come across one side of the pond and then come up on the other side of the pond. I know? noticed that. Yeah, so those lines I like doing too, but you know, just regular mowing straight lines. Okay. Line too. I mean, that looks the best usually. Like over in the up next set of grass over there in that big one, I just have one nice set of lines just nice and long going from one side to the other. But I, I only mow that every other week and then the other week I just kind of do a random pattern because I don't want it to get rid of those lines. I want those ones to stay there because they look the best. Okay. It's kind of hard to mow it any other way because it takes too long, you know, because it's really long and really narrow. So, I mean, the only other way to do it would be doing long diagonal lines, but when you do that, you're just blowing a lot of grass into the people's patios and stuff, so it's not really worth the extra time of blowing to get those to stick in there, you know. So it's so the pattern that you use on a property is dictated in part by the the contour and shape of the property but also things like the patios like we've got in the back here where we're, we can't really because i noticed you were blowing grass on it and that means we've got to come back and get all this grass yeah i mean we yep. blow it off anyways but there's that's a lot more work than just minimal glass grass blowing in there usually yep. i don't even blow any grass in there but just for today i just kind of zip through it a little quick so what about one of the problems we've had too is when you uh, uh, mow stripes or whatever you get a too much of a pattern ingrained into the grass and then all of a sudden you're indenting and that's how we got this job was the next company never changed their pattern up how often do you change a pattern every up? every week i mow a different pattern i usually have four different sets of lines in there and then i'll mow it differently every week just switching them off every other week so you kind of memorize the lines of every property so that you can just yeah just get them you know, just get it down Sometimes I gotta double cut it, so I'll just go down one line and go down the other line. So I'm not, I'm never cutting it the same way two weeks in a row. So it's always switching it up. And okay. That's why I did the zigzags back here because I got these lines, this lines, and then one other set of lines that goes this way, straight yeah. with uh, with those backyards, right, with those patios there. And then, uh, then I was, couldn't find a fourth one because I'm not gonna mow it this way. It's gonna take too long. <laughs> so you just created this that yeah, way. I just did the zigzags that quick. <laughs> extra way to cut it. <laughs> All right, what else should guys, when they're trying to figure out how to do stripes, what else do they need to know, Alex? Just, you know, this mower is a little different because usually you go deck to deck, but this one I overlap probably about four inches on each side because the tires kind of mat down a little extra of the grass. So I just kind of do a little bit of overlap, but you got to overlap on both sides to make it even and consistent all the way along. Usually when you're mowing like a 60 inch single wheel mower, which are personally my favorite to do the job with but uh, you just go deck to deck you know you want to kick this edge of the deck butt it up right to the next section of your line there so that you don't have any you're not overlapping it and taking that tire mark out of there because that defined tire mark on each end kind of gives it a good look to the lines when you're just mowing with a single wheel tire I mean it looks like it's a single wheel mower mowing it because I overlap it so much oh so that's why it kind of looks a little bit smaller than what it is it's that's 72 inch mower i'm probably mowing 66 64 inches of it to get the well-defined stripes yeah to make it look the best yeah because i tried going wheel to wheel deck to deck on this one and it just it just didn't look that right and that's why i didn't really like it at first but then i kind of started experimenting with it overlapping a little bit and then the lines ended up turning out really good so so would you say that the lines turn out 
av just average, better, or worse than a typical mower that doesn't have dual wheels? Because I thought you were getting an advantage because I'd never seen stripes laid down just time and time and time again. I'm like, well, maybe it's the dual wheels cutting it, matting it down, yeah. defining those edges better. So I, I don't mean, know. You can really mow with any mower. You need to have nice sharp blades, so get the nice cut on there. But I mean, it's it's just all how you mow, nice and slow keeping it consistent, deck to deck, and that's how you get the nice defined look in there. But this compared to the other mowers, I, I've been liking this one a lot. Yeah. I mean, I can, cause you know what, I can come in and I can just zip around and not even tear any of the grass up, you know. The, du the dual bit, tweels are amazing for yeah, that. A lot better than what I thought they were gonna be. Cause you know, I seen pictures of them online when I worked at other companies and I was like, oh, those things are just, they're worthless. You know, they can't, it can't be any better than a regular mower and then, I mowed that pond over there, and I started making these lines with it, and it ended up being a really good mower. Let's go mow that pond over there next. So next up is what we call the crosshatch pattern, and this is actually a two-week pattern. In the first week, we mow this diagonally up and down the slope. This pattern will then require the lawn to regrow, and then in the following week, we come back, and then we mow it the long ways across the slope. And that's where you start to really notice those deep ingrained stripes. So Alex just made a really good point. We were, Alex, we were standing over there on that hill and we were looking at this hill and you couldn't see any of the stripes. Yeah. No. So it's, you got the, where you, you know, your viewpoint of is where you're really going to notice things. So like when you come here and you look, this hill is going to look cross hatched, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the goal by the time we're done. Yeah. Yep. Are you going to cut this one twice to show them how you're going to crosshatch it? Yeah, I'll cut it going this way and then I'll cut it the diagonal way as well. Too. Okay. Okay. So you can see the process starts the same. He's already outlined and contoured out the property, meaning that he's just followed the contours and cut a straight line around all of the edges and he uses those edges as his turning zones so that his pattern in the middle of the property never gets turned on or messed up. Now, if he wants to eliminate even the turn marks on the outside of the property, he would then recut it. So it's your call whether you wanna cut the uh, and outline at first, outline at last, or what we're doing in this case is doing both. See the stripes aren't as pronounced unless you're angling yourself right. The reason I'm saying that is think about it from your customer's viewpoint. Where are they going to be standing when they're looking at their lawn? Are they going to be looking out their balcony down on it? Well, that's the where you're going to want to cut so that they can get the best view from their balcony. If they're going to be looking at it from the street and they want to impress the Joneses and the Andersons across the street, well, then you're going to cut the pattern in to get the best viewpoint from across the street. So you might want to just talk to your customer ahead of time and explain to them that the pattern won't be visible from every single angle, that it will be most prominent from certain angles. And then use that angle to cut in the pattern. That way you're going to be doing something that matches their expectations. Now under full disclosure, he would typically go down further on the slope before he does his turn because he wants to turn the machine around inside of that outlined area but in this case the bottom of this slope is super wet because it seems to rain every second day in minnesota it makes it almost impossible to do this and we'll show you what we're talking about here in just a minute Step one? Yeah, that was just that would have been that would have been one week of mowing right there. Okay. Would have just hit a border, then hit the going down the hill, and then the next week 
I would just, I hit the border around the curb line and then I just follow the time through the curb line all the way down. So to create the crosshatch on week two, he just follows the curb line down and around the pond to create the rest of the effect. Let's go to a wide view and show you what I'm talking about. Now this is, remember, just for demonstration. Normally, if we were actually cutting, he wouldn't stop at the end of the hill. He would go all the way around, but it's really wet. Let me show you what we're dealing with this here. This is super wet down here. Look at it. It's just... So this is making this is making Alex's job of striping a little more difficult. So he's making that right more, makes it look easy, but these are not good striping conditions. Just an FYI. God, that's a beautiful crosshatch design. That's just, that's just pretty. It's just pretty. I know why you guys that do striping take so much pride in it. Because it's a skill. It's a skill and it's an art. All put together. And there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't have pride in your striping. That just comes to life. It's like taking a piece of canvas, a green piece of canvas, and actually drawing something on it, you know? Grass is the canvas and stripe is the design. I don't know, that probably sounds really pokey, but I really don't give a crap anymore. All right, what are you gonna do next? Uh, probably gonna go mow that top section up there. You got a pattern over there that's different? Oh yeah, I got patterns in every section that I mow here. Yeah, <laughs> I got them everywhere. I mean, I think it's faster to mow it like that. Okay. Mow it in circles, or you're gonna mow it this way. You know, I find all, most of my patterns are the least amount of passes I can make in the most distance. So we've done zigzag, we've done crosshatch. What's the one you're gonna do over there? Uh, I could probably get some diamonds over there. Maybe some diamond-shaped centers there. Really? Yeah. You know? Really? Yeah. I mean, I can't guarantee it, but I'll have to see how I mowed it last week. I don't really remember. I'll have to look at it. All right, where where are you going? Okay, so what's the, so this is the area, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what are we doing? Well, uh, I, last week I mowed it this way. Okay. So this week I'll mow it this way, and you'll kind of be able to see diamonds. As it so, so it'll just be the center of the line. So, where they cross so the last week you mowed this way, and then this week you're going to mow this way. So is it, at, is it at a 90, or is it at more more aggressive than a 90 to get, pull off that diamond? Because that would just pull off squares then, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's more aggressive than that. Kind of, I made one pass right there about that so okay you can kind of see like right there looking up this line oh you right can here. see the diamond right here right this is what you're aiming for yeah okay okay so if I got this straight last week you mowed like this and now this week you're gonna mow last week I mowed this way the, oh this oh got it okay now I can now I see it. Yeah. Okay, so, so you see the line there, and then now you're gonna. Uh, I think I might actually. Yeah, maybe I'll just mow it this long way, and then I think that would come out better. Then you kind of get the diamonds in there. This is more of like a like a square, I, I like what you were saying. And when I go into it, because then it basically is a 90 degree angle from this line to that line so I'll just mow it this long way here and that'll give it more of the diamond look on there okay all right I gotta get my camera set up oh yeah oh yeah I can see the diamonds they're starting to pop that is so cool just it's almost like as he goes you can just start to see the pattern coming behind his mower Them, you know, 
Oh yeah. You look down right there. Oh yeah, no, I can see them. It's it's tough, like the lower you go, the less you can see them, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure these guys from when they're looking out of their kitchens, look down. Yeah. Yeah, it looks, I love it. It looks amazing. That's such a cool pattern. All right, guys, well, that's gonna be our video for the day. Big thanks to Alex. Yeah, no problem. Because he's the stripe master. Yeah. Wanna be called the stripe king? Yeah. Just don't be called the sofa king, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys. <laughs> Let me know if you get that joke in the comments down below. You get that joke, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll probably have to edit that out, but anyway. <laughs> God bless you guys. Let me know about your striping. Um, if there's any other stripes patterns put put the challenge up to alex yeah put it put it up to him i'm sure he'd like to actually have some pattern challenges yeah let me know <laughs> if we're having a pattern challenge i'd have to sit down on a 60 inch and i can make it look a hundred times better than with this more with how big these little pieces of property are you know this is just a fast one to mow with well, we got a couple 60 inches yeah so yeah, yeah. we can do it we can do it we can make that happen <laughs> God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Go get them. I hope your stripes turn out absolutely amazing. Let us know if this video has helped you out. We covered zigzag, crosshatch, and diamonds today. And uh, there's plenty more patterns, but that's our video for the day. And we will see you guys on the next one and check out these other two videos right here. I'm going to get down off from my mower. See ya. See you guys. See you, Alex.